This is the difference between those of us that serve God and those ones that serve Satan. Because those that serve Satan are completely committed to him. But you find that the Christian's commitment is toxic of him. Today he loves God. Tomorrow he loves something else. Today he's committed to God in all of his fullness. Tomorrow he's half-hearted in his service. So I don't know the people that God has sent me to this, this afternoon, but this prayer stretch, the emphasis is destiny. And the question I want you to keep in your mind eh, as we are journeying through the scriptures is what exactly is God building with your life? Hmm? What is it that God is building with your life? I will make you. Just read the scriptures carefully. Every time God encounters a man, the next thing is to push him into his prophetic destiny. What is God building with your life? I like the way my generation prays, oh. But you see, I'm afraid that we think that the end of the Christian life is praying. No, no, no. Praying is the means to the end of the Christian life. It's part of the means. The goal of prayer is not prayer. The goal of prayer is transformation. Is that as you are praying, you are beginning to look like Jesus. You are beginning to think like Jesus. You are beginning to act like Jesus. You are beginning to produce Jesus kind of results. Become a saint man like Jesus that God can count on you in your generation. He said, follow me. I will make you. John 21, you get to verse 15. The Bible says that after they had eaten, Jesus again looked at Peter and asked him a critical question. Lovest thou me more than this? There are two schools of thought. If you are a theologian or a Bible student, you will know that there are two schools of thought on that scripture. One school of thought says that, that is, there are some scholars that say that the meaning of that scripture is that Jesus was asking Peter, do you love me more than these carnal things? There's another school of thought that says that it was not the matter of the fish and the drink and the bread. That Jesus was asking Peter, among your brothers, lovest thou me more than them? Because to him that loves more, more will be demanded. It's in your Bible. To him that loves more. So Jesus was trying to prepare Peter for the end of his life. That's why if you read further, it says to him, that now that you are young, you will walk around. He says, but when you are old, we need somebody to carry you by the hand. By the hand. This is why the portion of scripture that my brother read, when they put Peter in prison, notice that Peter was not doing VG. Are you aware? It's the church that was praying. The church was the one raising incense. What was Peter doing? He was sleeping. Because he knew his master had told him, when you are old. He knew he would not die in that prison. Somehow. Because his master had told him that, you, you will be old. You, you, Peter. You will be old. So he was sleeping. Waiting for the salvation of the Lord. Waiting. So you need to ask yourself tonight, is it just prayer we are doing? What is the end game of all this praying? How is it that you can pray, dear brother, and you still have the f tree to say pornography is your weakness? What kind of prayer are you praying? How is it that you are praying, you are stretching? Prayer stretch, we do prayer stretch probably every month. Every month, you come to stretch. And yet, your appetite for carnal comedy has not died. We check your phone now. You have downloaded all of Sabalo's comedy. Sabalo. Your brain is like Sabalo. A man who thinks that women's buttocks and breasts are items of comedy. You, 
you watch him consistently and you you are just you are just thinking thinking that you will be a man of fire destiny is not wishful thinking it's not we are spending time arguing that Johnny Drill is a Christian artist Johnny Drill you know me I'm not afraid to call Nemo Cassandra my calling That he's a Christian musician. To the extent that they've invited him to a church to minister. Minister. And we're wondering why our generation is like this. Lord, what did you do to Catherine Kuma? Lord, what did you do to Stephen? What did you do to Philip? Brothers, they knew how to please God always. And one of the things you need to realize, I've been teaching this for weeks now, and I'm not going to be tired, is that the value of the Christian, the potency of the Christian lies in our separation. I'm not going to be tired. Though. If we do not become distinctively separate from the world, we will not have ability to influence it. The world will crumble in our hands. It will be rotting. And our light will not be piercing enough. If we still look like the world, talk like the world, act like the world, have the world's desires, we cannot affect the world. Was he arguing what is wrong with worldly music? Meanwhile, the people in the world will not find themselves arguing about your own matter. But we were confused. Say so, so. So when I want to marry, I'll be singing to my wife, today, oh, why not compose your own song? You are using your carnality to build an empire of lawlessness around your life. And you want to fulfill destiny. Listen, brethren, I didn't come to talk to everybody. You see, I came to speak to people who are like me, that in my private prayer place, I weep. I'm not as, as, as agile and Noise making as you see me on the pulpit when I'm in prayer. In fact, I used to feel one kind. I used to tell myself that I'm such a weak man. Little thing in the presence of God. I'm already weeping. I can be like that for four hours. Crying, begging him. Begging him, help me. Help me. Now. Please, Lord, help me. I don't want to die like this. Help me, please. Help me. I don't have any ambition. I've told God. I just want to die fulfilled. Fulfilled. When I stand before you, I want to be able to say, Kai, everything you wanted to do with my life, you did it. I just want to die fulfilled. So if it is destiny, if you want to fulfill your destiny and become all that God wants you to become, you must begin to look at Jesus as a model. Peter, did you see Paul's story? The minute he met Paul, the next thing was that he was reading out Paul's prophetic scroll. Have you seen it? Acts chapter 9, verse 15. Acts chapter 9 and verse 15. I'm coming to Esther. That's where I'm going to tie this up shortly. Acts chapter 9 and verse 15. Now, remember the story that the Lord came to Ananias and said to Ananias, Go and pray for this brother, brother Saul. And Ananias said, ah, Oga, we know him. Oh. That guy is a killer. That guy is an enemy of the church. That guy is a terrible person. Then the Lord needed to respond to Ananias. He says, but the Lord said to him, go thy way. For he is a what? Chosen vessel unto who? Me. So you know what he was telling Ananias? Even though you see his past, it's not you he's serving. I'm the one he's going to serve, not you. And as for me, I can pick people like Paul, pick people like Kesena, pick people like that. Because Paul was writing in the scriptures. He says that this is a great saying that is worthy of acceptation. Jesus came to save sinners of whom I'm chief. And when I get to heaven, I will meet Paul and say, oh God, you wrote too quickly. 
Because if you had met me, you would know that me, I'm chief. I'm the chief of sinners. I know that for God to have saved me, he must have answered many ananiases like this. Say, go thy way. That, that, that cultist is a chosen vessel unto me. I didn't know that the message I preached in Ghana, one blogger went and caught the place where I was talking about cultism. That I'm not a Jew. Somebody sent me the link. I said, oh boy, I don't, they, don't want, they won't put me for trouble for this country. <laughs> but two days ago, Thursday, I was in the office, I got a call. My phone was ringing incessantly. So which kind of thing be this? So I caught it. Send me a text. And the person sent me a message. He said, I saw your video. I'm a cultist. I'm so, 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 so number in the national. My question is that if God saved you, can he save me? What I was doing. And I called him. So I spoke to him in some language to know whether he is a fraud. And I found out that he was genuine. He's coming to see me. As I speak to him. I am being very careful. Because if I call his position, his people will know. He's coming to see me. The reason God pulled me out of the fire is because he's, I'm a chosen vessel unto him. I'm not living for you. That's why as I'm teaching, I'm not looking at your face. If the Lord tells me that you are fornicating, I will point at you like this. And when I finish talking, I will look at the other side. I don't have time. Because when I'm going to stand before the Lord, he will ask me, did you please me always? It's a matter of destiny. He said to Ananias, for he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and who? The children of Israel. Next verse, 16. For I will show him what? How great things he must suffer what? For my name's sake. Next thing you need to realize as you study people's lives is with every unique destiny will come unique suffering. You will suffer for my name's sake. You will suffer. Name's sake. Sometimes earlier on in my calling, I used to ask a lot of questions like, why are you doing this kind of thing to me? But now I realize if he doesn't do it to me, who should he do it to? The Bible says it is him whom the son loves, the father loves, that he chastises, he disciplines. There's a way God will love you. He will use your life to play Ludo. He did it to Job. Sure, you know that Job's problem did not begin because he was a fornicator. Job's problem was because he loved God. So God was using Job to boast. He called Satan and said, have you considered my servant Job? If Job was in the meeting, Job would have looked at God and said, Daddy, wait till I do you now. Wait till, wait till consign me for this one and discussion now. Huh? But he was not there. He had no privilege of admittance into that high meeting. So Satan appeared there and Satan was giving him a monthly report. Say, um, I've been roaming to and fro looking for whom to devour. And the Lord said, uh, where? He said, in the earth, in the earth. I've been roaming. He said, ah, you went to the earth? You cannot have gone to the earth and not seen that burning and shining light. Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth? What kind of boast is that? Bro, God was not speaking about angels. He was speaking about a man. He said, there is none like him in all the earth. And sit down and say, not lie. Does Job love you for nothing? He said, eh, it's okay. Double sis. And Job's life became Ludo. So he kill all his animal. Qua. Take all his money. Qua. He said, but don't touch his life. Don't touch his life. So even Satan is under instructions. Sit down. Touch his life. 
And all this while, one of the greatest scriptures you will read is the book of Job. If you've never studied Job, I beg you, sit down and study it. Job was speaking like an immortal, like a spirit. When his children died, as they came to them, they don't die, they don't die. Job tore his garment, shaved his hair, sat in ashes, and he said, naked I came, naked I returned. He said, can a man expect to receive good only from the Lord? What kind of man is that? If it were here, you'd have heard, Mogbe, oh, I don't die. I don't die, oh. Pastor Victor, oh, Pastor Victor. All the money, all the money, all the money. And I was about to pay for church. I was a Victor. I will kill myself. Don't kill yourself now. Pastor Victor will now be opening scriptures, trying to comfort you. Did everything work together for good. How will this one become good? How will this one become good? Give me a sniper. Give me a sniper. <laughs> a mortal. A mortal. He, he, he allowed himself to mourn. But he refused to curse God. He says, all the days of my appointed time will I wait my change comes. He says, I know my redeemer live it. What kind of man was this? What kind of man was this? It's, the Bible says in all of these things, Job refused to curse God or to lay a charge to his account. 